I was on the way to uh, Malden yesterday when Les called me and I was not expecting him to say he wasn't going to be here this morning. <clears throat> so um, I just had to start praying right then because I'm like, okay, Lord, you know what you want. So um, last night when I was talking with the Lord, um, this is what I got, and it's about our season. And I typically end up bringing something about some kind of a season in our life, so I wasn't really surprised. Um, and we as a people come from all different backgrounds and all different churches. So some people have grown up where they just go to church and they, you know, they know when it's Ash Wednesday and they know when it's Good Friday and they know when it, but they don't um, take the entire season. And the Jewish people and the Catholic people and the Anglican people, you know, 40 days before Easter starts Lent. So we are in Lent now. February the 21st was Ash Wednesday, and me being my radical self, you know, I mean, I, I go to all the churches, so I've done this before, you know, numerous times. I, I just go up in anybody's church, you know, because the Lord's there, and He says I can come in any church. So I've participated in, you know, the Ash Wednesday services, and they are very, very sweet. So if you haven't, I would encourage you for next year to be aware of it and find you a Lutheran church or a Methodist church or, you know, something you're comfortable with. Um, the Catholics, I'm not, I'm not as familiar with their stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. You know, I've been for different services and they're beautiful, you know, but you have to follow their lead. So, um, you can, you can, attend any of those churches and they still have the rituals that they go through during this season and I think it's real important for us to remember that because it wasn't given to us to forget it doesn't matter what denomination we are we should remember these important days and um, 40 is a significant number all through the Bible you know so um I don't think that it was by mistake that we have 40 days that we are to pray. Um, so, Ash Wednesday started on February 21st, and we have until March the 31st, which will be Easter. So, if you want to observe Lent, I would say start today. Um, because it sets us in a mindset of what was actually taking place and what God has done for us. Lent is observed for 40 days, but it's a season of fasting and penance, which is um, when we show sorrow or regret for our sins. So it's 40 days that we're supposed to be aware of how human we are and that we sin even without thinking about it a lot of times. Um, that's our human nature. And we just do things that are, are not real godly. So we're supposed to be fasting and praying. Now fasting can be food. Fasting can be anything that's near and dear to you. You can fast for 40 days. And... Our society to today, I have seen people on the computer say, I'm fasting my Facebook for 40 days. Well, for the generation of 30-year-olds and under, that's a big deal. Because they don't know how to live without that computer, you know, and they, they got to be talking to people every day. So they're giving up something for them that's hard for them to give up. So fasting literally can be food, but it can be other things as well. But that's what Lent means. It's 
fasting and praying and getting our vertical self right so that we remember what season we're in and the things that were going on with Jesus leading up to Easter Sunday morning. Because that, that's the ultimate, is Easter Sunday morning. You know, Good Friday, we had Monday, Thursday, you know, is, is the Thursday. And, and all these churches have services on Monday, Thursday. And, and those are some of the most somber services I've ever been in. They're very quiet. And um, it's a remembrance of the Last Supper. You know, they give the Last Supper, and um, but the scriptures read, and everything is real quiet. There's no joy in that service. It, it's to remember what was actually taking place. So I would encourage you all, if you can find you a little church that has Monday, Friday, Thursday, and then Good Friday service, I would attend those, you know, if you've never attended them before, because... It'll touch your heart. Um, because it all leads up to Sunday morning. And and I'm sure most of us have been to sunrise service. Nothing sweeter than a sunrise service when you're watching that sun come up over the horizon and singing and praising and remembering that, you know, he wasn't in that tomb. And he's not ever going to be in that tomb. So that I want us to look this morning about the three things that you do during Lent. The first thing that it says in the Bible is we pray. And the prayer is about our relationship with God. You know, um, making things right. And our relationship with God. And we draw closer to God. And we, we listen for His voice. And we want to know what it is that He wants us to do. If we don't do it any other time of the year, we need to be praying and saying, what is it that I can do? You know, um, I personally think that the 40 days ought to be spent not watching the news. Amen. Amen. Because being wrapped up in the world out there, when you don't have any control over what's going on out there, and our control is in here and go in this direction. And whatever's going on out there, we can be praying about it without being looking at it and keeping it ever so in a, you know, we can pray and be praying for everything that's going on in the world without being in front of that news because it is so negative. There's, it's hard to be positive and stay positive when, when you're watching something negative all day long. But that's just my opinion. But uh, Psalms 6 talks about prayer. Let's see if I can get... <clears throat> and forgiveness. So let's... That's not where I have my... Let me change that. Psalm 32, 1 through 5. Psalm 6 is one of ours for prayer. But I want us to look at Psalm 32, 1 through 5. Because during our prayer, that's what we're, we're dealing with, is we're, we're asking for forgiveness for all the things that we do wrong every day. And we want to get right and keep our spirit right with God so we can hear God. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not immute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, My vanity was drained away as with the fever heat of the summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, 
and you forgave the guilt of my sin. That's just showing us right there. We carry things around with us that we think we can fix. And we we can't fix anything without God. You know, and some people think that Oh, that's not important enough for me to take to God. I've, I've had younger people to say, you don't, you don't think God really cares about that, do you? You know, I think God cares about every little hangnail you have. I think He knows everything, and I think He cares about every little intricate part of our lives. So, I, yes, I think that, that He cares and wants to, to be there for us, but I also think that we have to ask Him. And we have to say, Lord, we know that, that we have done wrong and ask for forgiveness every day. And then He forgives us to keep us right with Him every day. So I think during these next few weeks, we've got about three weeks till Easter, if we remember every day, we start out our prayers by praising God for who He is. And then we ask Him to forgive us for who we are. Because we are nothing without God. The second thing that we do during Lent is fasting. And fasting is directly affecting like the self part of us. That that's us and how we're dealing with things. So that um we want to look at Matthew six sixteen through eighteen. And this is Jesus talking about it. Whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance so that they will be noticed by men when they are fasting. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now, I've never fasted for 40 days, but I've heard preachers who have fasted for 40 days. And they say that the first week isn't that as bad as the rest, but when you get on into it, your body starts to just have this odor from it that it emits. It doesn't matter how many baths you take. And your your breath has an odor to it. You know, so what Jesus knew that and he knew what it would be like for us when when we would fast for forty days. So he's saying here, he's saying, you know, get up and take your bath and brush your teeth. Put a smile on. It doesn't matter how hungry you are. You know, if you're fasting for me and want to be close to me don't let the outside world know that you hadn't eaten in three weeks. You know, keep that between you and God. Get up and pray about it. Ask God to give you the strength to go through the day, and He will. And don't let the outside world know what you're doing, because I've asked you to do this to keep you right with me. And then the third thing is almsgiving, which is when we donate money or we donate our time to other people performing good works, which, you know, are charity or, you know, and some people can't get out and, and go, so... You know, they're praying for all these things, and some people send food to the poor, you know, but it's about giving to somebody else. And that's the last thing that's done during Lent and brought to our attention, because it's not about what we need and what's going on in our life. God wants us to be aware of our surroundings and everything around us. We are to be the shining light. And we're to give to other people. So the last thing he's saying, you know, it's just three things. During this 40 days, he wants us to remember because he knows our little brain can't remember that many things. 
He wants us to pray and to fast and to help our neighbors. So when we give to others, <clears throat> and I thought I had, yeah, it is Matthew, this is my Matthew oh, 6, it wasn't Psalm 6, Matthew 6, 3 and 4. Like I said, I put this together pretty quick. Um, for this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet. No, that's not six. Sorry. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise... You have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Now this is Jesus. And he's talking about giving to the poor in prayer. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be honored by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor... Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving will be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So, during this time, when we are doing prayer, fasting, and, and giving to others, all of it is supposed to be done between us and God. Now, if you're married, yeah, you may need to tell your spouse some things. I remember when Miss Ann gave somebody a hot water heater. Isn't that right? But it's like, you know, I think you shared that story after she passed, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, uh, a grandchild that was living with a grandmother had a baby and. uh they, the hot water heater was out, uh, <clears throat> and of course you need hot water with a baby uh, to bathe. Right. And uh, so she called a fella and uh, asked him if he could go put a hot water heater in for him and not tell him who did it. You know, and and... That's what God expects us to do, you know, because there are a lot of people just like that who don't know how to receive something, but God laid on her heart to do that. So it wasn't important, the physical person who sent it. God was telling her to do that. And I, I was telling um, this week, God brought to my remembrance about... Um, we, Drayton has a friend named Jerry whose wife died with AIDS and they had a little boy who was like six. And she had lived a long time because she found out she was pregnant with AIDS when she when she was pregnant. That's how she found out she had it. She had, she had contracted AIDS with um, a blood transfusion uh, from a bad wreck back in the 80s when AIDS first came out. And one day, God laid on my heart, I needed to go take Michael, who was a little boy, some peanut butter and bananas. And I was just like, okay. And, and I couldn't figure out, you know, what, what exactly that was all about. But it was an orange and a peanut butter and a banana and, and some kind of little candy. And I don't remember what kind of candy it was, but I called Jerry and I said, I need to come down um, and see you for a few minutes. And he said, okay. And when I got there and I gave Michael the little bag and Michael opened it up and he started taking stuff out of the bag. And Jerry said, how did you know to do that today? And I said, God told me to do it. And he said, Today's his mama's birthday, and these are all his favorite foods. You know, so God, and I wasn't walking a real godly life back then, you know. But he will, he will work with every one of us, wherever we are, if we'll just listen. 
you know, and I, I left there thinking, thank you, Lord, for being obedient, you know, because I grew up knowing about being obedient, but I wasn't exactly living like I should have, but I did listen to that voice that he sent me that day and tell me exactly what to take. So, I, I believe that Lent is here for us to remind us of how much we need God. It represents that 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness. It's 40 old days that we need to remember about being in the wilderness and praying and fasting and then giving. And the ultimate gift that was given to us was Jesus gave his life for us so that we can have eternity with Jesus but with all our loved ones as well. So I would challenge each person for the next three weeks every day to pray and remember to ask for forgiveness, to fast something that means something to you, whether it's a daily thing or whether it's something you're going to give up for the next three weeks, but give up something during the day that you think you just got to have. And uh, then when God lays it on your heart, do whatever he tells you to do for your neighbors, whether it's somebody you know or somebody you don't know, somebody at the grocery store, you know, just do what he says, and we may never even know what we, if we're giving something to somebody at a grocery store or out on the street. I know I talked to a little girl the other day. They keep little baggies in their car because their child just can't stand to see the homeless people begging. And they don't want to give them money. So they'll keep little baggies in their car with um, crackers and like a pair of socks and some kind of little wet white things, you know, that you can buy, you know, just like a toiletry and a few little snacks. And when they go by, she'll allow the child to hand it to the person, you know, because that's that child's ministry. She doesn't want to see anybody being hungry, you know, that day. That really is, is on her heart. So I would encourage everyone here for the next three weeks to just remember the three things that, that are done during Lent and lead up to Easter Sunday morning. And that's what I have. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank you. Good job. Well, thank you. Oh, let's all stand and join hands, I reckon. Yes, yes sir. <laughs>